How did you say your name and title first? Uh, my name is Peter Piper. I'm a senior principal engineer in our advanced mobility group. You get a lot of crap for that? I get a lot of crap from that. <laughs> so this day. Yep. Yep. Very much. So, so. I just watched you drive the uh, new Scion. 01 uh, side by side up here. Uh, and what makes this interesting, of course, is that Toyota really doesn't have a power sports division like Honda. That's right. Yep. But now you guys have kind of entered that with this concept side by side. And I'd uh, love to just get a walk around, kind of tell me about it. But the thing that's fascinating is it's got a, a Tacoma powertrain, right? That's right. Yep. That is the FR one motor hybrid straight out of the Tacoma. Um, and that's really what this whole vehicle was kind of uh, founded on was an engineering exercise and using our Toyota parts and uh, repurposing those into this market space to bring and increase the overall quality and reliability um, of this market. All right, but parts. let's talk about the real FUD, right? Yeah. So, so a Tacoma weighs about 4,500 pounds. Yep. This weighs 3,000 pounds. So it's about, it'll be about 3,500 pounds. Okay, so 1,000 pounds less. Yep, that's right. But, but you've got what, 350 Three, horsepower? 326 horsepower, 460 pound, pound feet of torque. A regular eight-speed automatic That's correct. out of the Tacoma. That's right. And the ability to run silent because it's a hybrid, right? Exactly. It's got a sandwich motor in there. Exactly. Yep. So, so what do you think is a use for that besides having some uh, high school kids sneak out of the house? Well, that's a, that's a good use. But honestly, a lot of that use would be uh, for every consumer that is going in and out of towns where they have some uh, they have no noise ordinances in place. For a lot of UTVs, such as Moab, you need to operate at a lower speed. Um, the EV mode would really allow them to go in and out of town when they're going trail to trail um, and basically adhere to higher speed limits, get to where you're going faster, and kind of have that novel concept while you're doing it. So and that's a really it, it, a very unique feature that we are excited to bring to this space uh, in this product. And how quick is it zero to 60? What are we looking at? Zero to 60, we're targeting sub five seconds. So All right, so okay. under, under five seconds. Under five seconds. Let's go look at the, yeah, the back end of this. So it looks like you've got at least, what, 20 inches of suspension travel or more. It's 26 inches of yeah. usable suspension travel front and rear. So that is segment leading as it stands right now today, even as a proof of concept and an engineering exercise. So. Did, you, did you go with the regular Fox shocks or are they adaptive? So these are these are just passive shocks. Right. So these are passive Fox shocks right now. Piggyback. Piggyback. Yep. Piggyback reservoirs. So and that's really where we're we're spending a lot of effort and focus on the, the baseline tune of these shocks so that we can really hit all the marks that we want from a capability and a dynamic performance is, is what really where we want to achieve uh, for this. And in terms of lockers, do you have lockers? Yep. So it will basically the rear gear is a fixed rear gear, which is essentially standard for this segment of side by sides. And then we'll have a front e locking differential. Yes. What makes it unique, of course, is, is a traditional eight-speed automatic. As you know, most side-by-sides oh, yeah. sides have CVT. CVTs, that's right. Honda yep. does a dual clutch. Yep. Uh, but yep. this is a traditional Tacoma. Traditional tra Tacoma. So it yeah. gives you that good, that really good linear power feel yeah. and that modularity when you're going into some extreme rock climbing situations. You have that really consistent power delivery. Um, and that's what we're really excited to bring, again, those components to this space to give that almost automotive quality feel uh, to this, this exciting Sport Plus segment. Now, this is an open one, but as you know, if you've been driving side by sides, right, a lot of the modern, or a lot of the newest ones are kind of like, you know, complete vehicles, right? That's so right. they've got air conditioning, That's they've right. got power windows, they've yep. got heaters. That's right. And you've decided to go kind of more traditional. That's right, yes. And I think that that was really kind of the core of this is this visceral experience of the side by side. And that's, um, that's where this proof of concept really leaned into it is being this kind of raw exper experience of the traditional open cab side-by-side. -side. Future, if we were to actually produce this, we'd definitely look into some alternates and having some cab enclosures and, and leading on our expertise. But for now, this is the exciting concept that we wanted to bring forth. Um. I think 21 states allow side by side, something like that. Yep, 20, 27. Yep, yep. And, and you have to have, it's 27, sorry. Yep. And you have to have what? Turn signals? Turn it, signals. It, it varies by state, That's right? That's right. Yeah, it varies by state, state by state. You have to have turn signals. You also have to have, uh, you know, windshield. And um, there's some states actually require DOT rated tires as well. Um, but yeah based on state-by-state state usage and, and kind of rules and regulations, that's where we'd leave that to the customers to kind of decide where they go with it. And is that a backup camera, I see? It is a backup camera. <laughs> yep. crazy. So we have backup cameras. We, the intention would be a full display rear view mirror. Um, if you've ever driven Can-Am Maverick yep. or a lot of the side-by-sides, yep. there's not a lot of rear view visibility. So no. that's something that we're looking at, you know, adding those, even in a concept phase, um, adding some of those creature comforts that 
aid in kind of safety and visibility and usability for the customer. And how big is the battery in this? So the, the, ba the HV battery yeah. is a 1.8 kilowatt hour that's battery. pretty good, right? It's pretty good. So, so, so in, in a hybrid Tacoma, that's good for a mile or two maybe? Yep. And it's, electric, how about in this? So in this, we're actually tuning that to increase, it'll be over five miles of pure EV range. Wow, that's, that's speed great. limited. Yeah. Um, so there'll be a, a top limit on the speed, but we're really trying to push our boundaries on the capacity and the capability of that battery to help suit the need that we want for this product. How about like brakes? Is that standard Tacoma as well? Brakes, actually. We, we borrowed brakes out of a GR Corolla for the front setup and a yep. GR Yaris RC for the rear setup. Okay. Uh, again, as as we do as engineers, we wanted to throw kind of everything at this, and that's really the, the braking performance is one other area that we saw in the market is really in dire need of an enhancement. So we obviously went into the, the GR bag of tools and applied those brakes, and it has phenomenal stopping power. Now, I think a lot of people are wondering, first of all, will you build it, but it's a concept, so. It's a concept, that's, that's right. Yep. in the air right now. That's in the air, yep, okay. very much so. Uh, and then the other question I think suppose people would have is how much would this cost? And I'm guessing a traditional side-by-side -side is 30 to 50, depending. Okay, so yep. right, depending. Is that something, is that fair? I think as a concept, yeah. um, you know, we can't really speak on final pricing, but our aim would be to be competitive. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't want to price ourselves so far out that it's, that it's non-competitive with the segment, but so we'd be cognizant of that, but it, that would be determined if we were to actually go to production. And why'd you go with Scion and not Toyota? I mean, I know Scion was a brand that, you know, eventually folded back into the company, yes. but why, why Scion? Scion really was, the core of it, one of the kind of the ethos of Scion brand was laboratory. Uh -huh. So that really fit well with this activity. This is a laboratory, this is a proving ground, this is exactly what we want to do. Um, and it was a, an opportunity for us to leverage that branding and push it forward into the future. Um, and really harken back to what we, we did use it for back in the early 2000s as a, a way to produce new products um, in an experimental way. So that is a really good fit and kind of a, a, a lineup for, for the branding. With the holidays here, I've got a perfect last minute gift idea for you and comes from our friends at Onyx Off-Road. It's software so you can get it right away and best of all, for that loved one in your life, if they have Onyx, they will never get lost off-road and maybe they can take you with them and explore some exciting new trails. Just click on the link below and use TFL Off-Road to get a significant discount this holiday season. Now for all those folks who are out there watching this video and they're saying, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Where yeah. would they go to, to take their money? Would they go to a Toyota dealership? Is there going to be, you know, Honda has the power what do you sports. Want it to be, Roman? What do I want it to be? What well, do you think it should be? I think it shouldn't be a Lexus. Let's start with that. Because okay. I know you're going to be selling, fair. That's fair. selling the GT, G, GR GT at a Lexus dealership in the sure. century. So let's, let's leave Lexus out of it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I kind of, you know, we do a lot of power sports uh, and we do side by side and it's a little different world. And I kind of yeah. wonder if you actually sold it through a Toyota dealer, if they would know what to do with it. I, I, I have found in the past that oftentimes, unless they're specific to, to that world, mm -hmm. it kind of would get lost somewhere in the shuffle, right? Yep. You come in and like, hey, we got this Toyota yeah. thon going on. I, what can I do to get you into a Tacoma? Yeah. And this might be sitting somewhere in the back. Whereas I think a power sport shop would really appreciate this and they'd be like, hey, this is something really unique. It's got, I don't think there are any hybrids right now. They're all, they're, they're pure electrics, right? Yep, pure electrics and just traditional gas. But there's no yep. hybrid, so yep. I think it would do well in a side-by-side. -side. Okay. Uh, yeah. Store that would be my that would be my guess. I see. Yeah. yeah. So much of that will be determined if again if we went were to go into the future for production. Um, that's a lot of TBD at this point. But we'd certainly listen to a customer base and understand where where that is best suited. How would it be best suited to get to the customer? And then you got to think about you know how does it, does it weigh more? So obviously you said this is thirty five hundred. Yeah. So if you, have, 3, if you have a typical trailer, what that's two thousand. So mm -hmm. now you're towing like 5,500, which is well within the capability of a taco. Right. It might be a little bit above some of the cars because yep. cars are like maybe three exactly. to five, exactly. depending. So yep. I think yep. that's also important because in the states where you can't drive it, you're gonna have to right. tow it. Very much so, and that's one of the considerations. That's a lot of our charge going forward if we were to, again, to produce this, is that we would want to aim and make sure that it's, it's a usable product for the customers that are already out there, that and, it's not outside of any sort of norm or anomaly. And if I were buying it, the other thing that I would worry about, and we, we could talk about that, is safety. There's a lot of side-by-sides. I mean, people get hurt in them because when they flip, which they do, people stick their hand out and Correct. then their hand yep. gets hurt. Yep. And then 
uh, in a lot of vehicles, it is a roll cage, but it's really not. It's more of a That's sports right. cage. So have you thought about that? Yeah, so I can show you the cage construction. Yeah, so that it. was one of the safest, one of the largest attributes, excuse me, gentlemen, I'm through. One of the biggest considerations uh, for us as designers and engineers is, is the cage construction. So as you said, much of the makers will have a two-piece frame. So yep. they'll have an upper cage and then a lower frame. Yep. This actually is a continuous frame structure. So we actually designed this to meet FIA, uh, basically FIA regulations. So race regulations were derived to, to actually produce and design this frame. So it's of a higher, higher standard. So essentially what we ended up with is two and a half to three times uh, higher strength to weight ratio than the nearest competitor. Um, and that's really by just applying a lot of those FIA regs to, to the cage construction itself with the material selection, um, and then just our general know-how of body and white development and structure at Toyota. We can apply a lot of that to this cage to make it the safest in the industry directly from the manufacturer. Yeah, and I think that to me would be very important because what, what I see off-road is a lot of people buy these for their families. Exactly. And, and yeah. they're so capable, yep. right? You said 27 inches, I think you 26 said? 26 inches 20, of travel, yep, yeah, that's and, right. And where it would take, let me give you an example. Like uh, in Moab, we go to Chicken Corners. Yep. Chicken, or top there. of the world, right? That's right, yep. And the first time I did that in a Jeep, it took like three hours. Mm -hmm. I did it in a side-by-side -side literally in like 15, well, it was more like 25 minutes. That's right. To the yeah. top and back. Exactly. And, and you, you go much faster, you go into much that's deeper right. stuff. Yeah. And then you want, it to be safe because you can get in over your head very quickly. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of a cheat code in that sense of off-roading yeah. that you, you all of a sudden have this high capability, but maybe everybody's driving skill has not increased with that. So that's, again, that's why we focused heavily on the safety of the vehicle. Yeah, that, that, that's wonderful yep. to have something that, you know, you can feel yeah. confident. Anyway, uh, thank you for taking Thanks. the time. I, I think it's time for us to go. Thank you so much. Yeah, Roman, I yeah. want to add something to, your, yeah. to you a little bit. Go for um, it. Everyone's commenting on how big this is. Yeah, I'm good with that. Right? Well, I, I just want to clear the record. This is the same wheelbase and width as a Players Pro R4, and it's actually 10 inches shorter wheelbase than the new Can-Am Maverick R Max. So it is in competitive and it's actually shorter. So yeah. I don't know what it is about this cage that makes it look so large, but I, I, it is competitive. I think you have a lot of automotive journalists who probably haven't <laughs> sat in a lot of side by sides. <laughs> even, even the side by side guys, dirt wheels guys said the same thing. That's so big. I'm like, it's not. Yeah. It's actually competitive. The competitive side. Yep. We, 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 we have a. a we have a Kawasaki at the, at the office right now. Sure. Fully, yeah. and that's yep. also very big. They've yeah. just gotten, you know, that's last where they're at, where right? The that's where the going, market's right? at. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You want to, you know, you want to put your whole family in it. Yep. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you so guys, much. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you want this, if you want to say take my money, I'm sure Toyota Brass would love to hear that. So that these guys' hard work right. doesn't just end up in a concept, but ends up in your nearest power sports store. <laughs> 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 we'll see you guys next time. Ciao.